With the wireless card upgrade in my X61S, I got lured into the idea of doing that with my X230 as well. Besides, this was one of those machines that struggled with maintaining a stable Wi-Fi connection from one corner of the house to the other. Not so much because of the distance, but more so due to the number of obstacles in between the machine and the router. Before I sort out the situation with my Wi-Fi, I thought I might as well upgrade the module in the X230. However, there was a major block here, which thankfully got taken care of, and that's exactly what we'll talk about in this video. While waiting for the Intel Centrino Ultimate N6300 for my X61S, I ordered two more out of frustration as it took an eternity to arrive. Meanwhile, I had destroyed the wireless card on my X61S and it was pretty unusable given the location of my modem to which I would have needed to be tethered to to get access to internet on that machine. Having a couple of spare wireless modules, I simply replaced the one on my X230 given that this machine was at least 5 years newer than the X61S, I assumed it would work right out of the box, which it didn't. As soon as I tried to boot the machine, it made loud beeps with an error about an incorrect module being plugged in and immediately shut itself down. Now there's a whitelist on this device, which I wasn't surprised with, but this experiment proved that the Intel Centrino Ultimate N6300 wasn't on the list. There's no Middleton BIOS mod for the X230, but I did find people on the web talking about Core Boot and IV Rain. I chose IV Rain, it being the simpler of the two, and promising what I was specifically looking for here, which is removing the hardware whitelist. I found the exploit pretty simple to perform, with one small problem and that is it needs a certain bias version that's exploitable with the exploit and that was lower than the one I had on the machine. Usually Lenovo places validations such that it won't let you install a bias version lower than the one already installed on the machine. So downgrading the bios to version 2.60 couldn't be done the regular way. It isn't impossible though and I found out that one could do it in at least three ways. The first one is using Windows with a few commands to explicitly flash the specified old BIOS image. The second one was using Linux, making changes to the BIOS image file and playing around with scripts to achieve a similar effect as the first option. The third one was using IV Prep as it promises to achieve the required downgrade for your machine with the help of a pre-written script. Now the last option requires Windows. But as I had several spare storage drives lying around, I used one for a temporary Windows 7 setup and chose to go that route. And thankfully, it helped me through the downgrade process like a breeze. Once you have the correct BIOS version for the exploit, the rest of the process is pretty simple. You just need to download the image file, create a bootable drive, boot the machine into the custom Debian system and follow the prompts. You just have to make sure the machine is connected to the charger. I'm sure I'm short selling the process and the tool here, but it's already well documented and also covered in plenty of other tutorials on the internet. Once the process was complete, booting into the BIOS gave me access to a lot of advanced options, proving that the machine was now applied with IV Rain. There is one problem though, that as soon as you restart after flashing the new BIOS, you do not only lose your date and time, but also the ability to set it back. As it goes without saying, I also lost my EFI variables and I had to fix it using a bootable void USB disk. This wasn't a planned step in the process, but at least I knew what needed to be done to fix this. For the issue with the date and time though, I think it might have fixed itself as soon as I booted into void Linux installer. Once it was all taken care of, Upgrading the wireless module was just as simple as removing the old one and placing the new one in. Just as I did back when I encountered the whitelist, only this time it worked. So using IV Rain, I am now running a slightly better wireless card and the system was never designed to work with. 
for the rest of the advanced features that come with Ivy Rain, I'll probably explore them when time permits. Who knows, this might just as well be the start of a series of upgrades for the X230. Only time will tell. That's all that I have for this video. Thanks for watching it till the end. May the maker watch over you. See you in the next video.